As you all know, Disney executives are very hard at work on really trying to balance things out with the Acolyte TV series after so many setbacks and problems with production by Kathleen Kennedy, as well as Leslie Headland, and exactly what it means for the future of the Star Wars universe moving forward, and how Jon Favreau and Dave Filoni are really doing amazing things, apart from what Kathleen Kennedy is trying to pursue. This is Mike Zero. Make sure to subscribe if you are new to the channel for future Star Wars updates. Also, by the way, guys, make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all so very much for the kind support. It is greatly appreciated. Now, one thing about the Disney Star Wars universe is that, yes, we have a lot of books and comics on the way that's going to expand multiple different eras of the timeline of the Star Wars universe, you know, such as the High Republic, the Old Republic, the Kenobi verse, as I like to call it, that bridge between episode three and four, as well as the Mandoverse, everything such as the Mandalorian, the Ahsoka series, Book of Boba, you name it. Now, given that we are in a very interesting scenario, we have John, George, and Dave working together as this trio, this team, if you will, that's bringing on other directors and writers. Directors like Peyton Reed is coming back into the Star Wars universe, the guy who directed the season two finale of The Mandalorian with Luke. And I think that he is by far one of the best directors to bring in for Star Wars. I really do. So moving past all of this, there's been a lot of things happening with the character of Reva. Now we all know that Reva was not very well received by the fans for the Obi-Wan Kenobi series for multiple reasons. Now some of you out there, and a lot of you maybe even, might actually like the character of Reva, but there's no denying the fact that the majority of fans had a problem with this character on some form or some level, all right? I myself had multiple problems with the character. You know, I felt that Moses Ingram's acting was off at times quite a bit. I felt that the character was very one-dimensional, but that's just to say at the very least there, you know, I digress. So the thing about all of this moving forward is that with, of course, Disney executives now gearing toward new Star Wars TV shows that will be run by Favreau and Filoni to handle Star Wars with respect, while Kathleen Kennedy is still having plenty of issues with the Acolyte, one major decision that the executives recently made had to do with the character Reva, portrayed by Moses Ingram. Now, it's noted that one of the big recent changes to the Star Wars roadmap was to cut out Reva from all future existing Star Wars projects that she was supposed to appear in early on. This included the second and third season of Obi-Wan Kenobi, as well as our very own Star Wars series that was going to be called simply The Third Sister, that would go over her origin story and what her life is also like, giving up the role of an Inquisitor. The executives made this decision based on several reasons. One of the biggest ones had to do with the fact that Moses Ingram was asking for way too much money for those projects and was warning to leave the series if she did not get what she wanted in return. Disney did not want to go over budget with the Reva series, and so they canceled it altogether. This is where Kenobi Season 2 and 3 were left in place to bring a return for Reva early on, since Kathleen Kennedy held control over the Kenobi trilogy story that transferred over to the series. Eventually for good, alright, for a good reason here, Disney was able to override that after her marketing approach with the Kenobi series led to the show getting bad feedback by the community in which they finally decided to drop Reva from the continuation of the Kenobi series, which right now is getting reworked for the fans to enjoy with new seasons and new creators taking care of it all. Now, it doesn't stop there. Before I get to the next thing here, I just want to say one thing is that this is nothing against Moses Ingram, all right? Just a very nice person, but the character that she played very one-dimensional to me and a lot of fans out there. And I think a lot of you here will agree on that. When you look at a character like Obi-Wan Kenobi and he has his own Star Wars show, I feel that you should not just throw in some random character that is the bigger part of the story, or at least the equal part of the story. It should have really been all about Vader and Obi-Wan equally, back and forth. That's what they should have done. That's what the Kenobi series really should have focused on. If you look at Revenge of the Sith, you know, is it about Obi-Wan or Anakin and some random character? No, it's about the actual characters that it's focusing on, and that's what the Kenobi series needed. So, honestly, you know, there are good bits and pieces in the Kenobi show. I've pointed this out many times, 
but in its entirety, the show really is not good on a consistent level. It has its moments that are really good, you know, like I say, the battle at the very end of the show between Vader and Kenobi, or when Kenobi gets set on fire, or, you know, another great example is when you have, you know, Kenobi on Tatooine, like little things like that are very well illustrated. But other than that, everything was very subpar. You know, things like Vader in the back to tank was very cool, but I digress again. So on top of this, all right, Another major reason with Disney executives and why they erased Reva from the Star Wars roadmap had a lot to do with the fact that no major companies wanted to create Reva merchandise because of how unpopular the character really was. After all, Disney is very motivated over merchandise too, and seeing Reva not getting any support from any toy companies or anything like that really led to Disney taking the plunge and erasing her from any future Star Wars shows that they are being run by anyone else than Kennedy. However, Kennedy is set to bring Reva in the form of a cameo in Skeleton Crew to make her older self as a fully trained Jedi this time around to help the lost children across the galaxy. However, Reva is set to only be a cameo for that series. So far, that is the furthest that Reva is going to go for the new Star Wars universe, where Reva is set to also have many of her planned books and comics cancelled as well, and erased from the Star Wars timeline, where the Disney Star Wars timeline, of course, since they know that books like that are not really going to sell at all and would be a waste to push for that for the marketing approach for a character that is so unwanted in the Star Wars community. Now Moses Ingram, at no surprise, all right, is actually described to be very frustrated over Disney's big decision through all of this. And yeah, I get that, you know, who would not be frustrated over that? You know, if you're some actor that had a handful of projects here and there and then you're given Star Wars out of, out of everything, right? And then you're kind of thrown out because of how things were written or how you were instructed to act or, you know, it's things like that. It's kind of like when you look at Hayden Christensen, right? He got a lot of flack based on what the script was like, uh, how he was directed to act in the movies. But when you look back at it now, you know, the prequels have its own style. And I always like to point this out that the prequels, the originals, and the sequels all have different tones, the way that the acting goes. And when you look at the prequels, specifically, I like to call it Elizabethan style. It has a real Elizabethan style acting in there. Almost like it's a play or something like that. And George Lucas actually pointed this out before in the past that that was done intentionally and could very well be why a lot of fans did not like the acting or the way that the dialogue flowed with some of the characters. So, moving forward from all of this, you know, I think that at the end of the day, Disney made the right call. You know, could they give Reva a true second chance in a series or in a project run by Favreau and Filoni? I don't think so. I think that the fans have made up their minds at this point. Are we open to a second chance for her? I guess so but not in a major role that's gonna interfere with legacy characters at least. But so far, I would not rather have this character involved. They hold no interest in her as a character. Again, nothing against the cat, nothing against the actress, but this character was very poorly written and planned, so to speak. Stuart Beatty's version was far superior. I don't know if you guys learned about that. You know, but anyways, drop a comment below, guys. Let me know what you guys have to say about all this below in the comments. And if you guys did enjoy the content for today, make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all so very much for the kind support, and I'll catch you guys next time.